Hey folks, welcome back to our channel. This is Off Grid Van Life, and in this video, we're going to be looking at building a drop in replacement lithium ion phosphate battery. So, one of the things that we've been uh, thinking about recently is that when you look at drop in replacement batteries, uh, generally they are fairly low capacity in terms of being like 100 amp hours or somewhere around there and they're also fairly low uh, capacity in terms of how much you can draw from them so they're usually around 100 amps somewhere like that so we've been exploring some ideas and options in terms of actually getting a drop and replacement with a 200 amp bms um, but in this video we're going to be looking at building a drop and replacement using this case so this is a test case that we got from one of our suppliers in China. And we're gonna build a battery in this. Uh, we've tried it out and uh, we will not be able to use the 200 amp BMS, unfortunately, um, but we're gonna build it out using 150 amp BMS. Um, so yeah, let's get after that. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna tape up the cells with a set of uh, plywood, uh, boards on either end and the purpose of this is to stop the cells from expanding um, as they are charged and discharged so cells will do that uh, as they're used um, it's not never a lot of movement unless there's a problem with the cell usually it's literally millimeters uh, but when you have those even if it's small just millimeters um, movement on the terminals it can affect the um, the components uh, in the cells when you have a solid bus bar like we're going to be using on these cells So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to tape these cells with fiber tape So we've positioned the cells in series just like you would uh, if you were building out a battery and uh, We're going to now tape them up so that we can um, Compress them Yeah, the <clears throat> it should be uh, Noted that these are at about 30% uh, state of charge so they are uh, not at their most shrunk, but they, they are pretty uh, flat at the moment. They won't swell that much, they're good quality, so they'll only swell by about a millimeter, but we're trying to actually prevent that. So let's hold them close together and swing this tape around. Okay, so the cells are now all taped up. We just checked if they fit in the case, which they do. So now we're gonna connect up a 100 amp BMS. And this is just purely to top balance the cells and to charge the battery. Um, so these cells are not charged as we mentioned. And this method, we've covered it in other videos, but we call this our, our fast top balance method. And that's where we uh, connect the BMS up charge it at quite a high amperage until the BMS cuts it off so until one of the cells reaches the threshold that we'll put into it which is about 3.6 volts and then at that point we then take the BMS off and we will connect the battery up using a, uh, a set of wires that we've made that will then connect it in parallel to do the final top balance with the power supply. So we'll get this connected up and the charge you're going. Tighten them up, seeing as I don't have my safety glasses here. You'll need a balance lead on there. Alright, so there we go. We've got the BMS temporarily connected up there on a 
charger that will uh, is designed to charge the battery up to 14.6 volts. So obviously as soon as one of the cells hit that 3.6 volt threshold that I mentioned earlier, the BMS will disconnect it. At that point we'll then remove everything, we'll connect them up in parallel and we'll do a final top balance just uh, leveling everything out. Uh, and then we'll be good to go to actually put this into the case, assemble the BMS onto it in its final way um, and build out the battery. So we're going to leave this charging overnight and then we'll pick it up tomorrow morning. Okay, so the battery is now fully charged and top balanced. So as you can see here, what we did was we connected up a set of wires to uh, connect the battery cells in parallel. So obviously they're positioned in series as if we were building the battery because we wanted to clamp them using this fiber tape and this plywood. Uh, but then now we've connected them up in parallel, top balanced them with a charger that goes to 3.65 volts. And uh, now we're going to connect up the BMS, tape the BMS to the side here before we drop it into the box. Um, but before we do that, we just need to extend the balance lead slightly because they, uh, this has to go all the way to the bottom and it's not going to reach the terminals on that side of the set. And the one thing we, we sometimes get questions about the balance leads and, and guys ask, can you extend the length of your balance leads? And the answer is yes, you can. Uh, but what you need to do is make sure that they're all the same, the, that they're extended to the same length using the same gauge wire. Um, so basically you just have uniformity across all of them because if you have any variation in them that may cause a, uh, a an impact on the BMS's ability to balance the cells. So we're going to extend these cables now. We only need about six inches. Yeah, that, that'll be plenty. So now we've got the balance leads all extended there, as you can see, um, all uniform in length and same length of uh, extension, just the same, just very small, what is it, 20, ga 20 gauge wire there. Um, so yeah, pretty happy with that. So normally you'd plug this thing in last, um, but we need to uh, tape it all up. So <clears throat> maybe what we should do is um, actually attach all the balance leads with the bus bars and then plug it in last. Yeah. So I'm uncomfortable doing it bit by bit. Okay. Right. So this, the thing is that this is going to require that should be on there, so that'll be fine. So then we're going to have the balance leads, well, the black one coming through there, so the rest can come back out again. Okay, so we have extended the uh, balance leads here, ready to go, and we've bent the uh, wires coming off the BMS so that it has enough clearance above it for the top of the case. And now what we're going to do is just prep the positive line. So we need a positive wire that's going to go from the positive terminal on the cells to the positive terminal on the lid of the battery case. So we're going to prep that now quickly and then we can do the final assembly and put it all together.
Okay, let's talk these all. <coughs> now that we've got all that. Is that coming to this side? Yeah, that comes to, to here. To here. Yeah. So, it'll be roughly here, so at this angle it's perfect. Yeah, okay. Um, we're going to torque all of these down to 8 Newton meters. It's plugged in there. So I think we'll just tidy these up quickly using some cable tires and then uh, actually tape the BMS onto the side of the just plug in the temperature probe and the Bluetooth. Bluetooth. So on these 150 amp daily BMSs they both go on the same side here so the temperature probe goes into the little port that says NTC and the Bluetooth goes into the port that says UART. Now, uh, if you have one of the more recent Bluetooth dongles, they actually have this little button on it there, which turns the BMS on. <coughs> Just want to cable tie these. I hope these soles are all right. Yeah, that'll be okay. All right, now we're going to drop it into the case here. Turn this on. Plenty of room. It actually fits really snug in this case. It doesn't have much room to move around or anything like that. So quite like that. Is that it? All right, let's get this lid on here, and then that's us. This way. Turn the BMS on, it's a good idea to tape everything up so you don't short circuit things. Okay, you can just spin that straight. Okay, and there we have it. We have a drop and replacement DIY battery in a nice plastic case like this with a 150 amp BMS, which is uh, quite an impressive battery, 280 amp hours. So when you check the terminals here, we're on 14.14 volts, which is to be expected as the cells have just been settling after being top balanced. So what we're going to do now is actually um, connect up an inverter and do a capacity test on this battery, but we'll make a separate video on the capacity testing. So if you're interested in watching that, then make sure you subscribe. And if you're already subscribed, then that'll be out as well. But yeah, we're pretty stoked with how this has turned out, how it's looking. Now the trick is, <clears throat> what we're going to do is to do some serious testing on this. Uh, so we're going to test it now initially with a high draw. We'll probably run this fan heater here, which will draw probably 100 and probably max out the BMS pretty much. Mm -hmm. um, and then we will uh, do some further testing 
back in England, my dad will take this back with him and put it into the controlled temperature environment and do some testing. Probably push that temperature up to fairly high temperature. So it would be good to do some testing at like 35 degrees, um, just so that we can really uh, figure out if there's going to be any issue with overheating or anything like that. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching and I hope this video has been helpful. If you have any comments or questions about this or any of the battery stuff that we put on the channel or anything van related, then uh, drop it in the comments. We'd love to hear from you and we'll respond to every comment. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers. Cheers.